Hey, I'm Philip, and welcome to a Photon Fusion bite size tutorial. I'm going to do a little bite size tutorial series based on a request from someone in Discord, so let's get to it. So in this first bite, we're just going to take a look at the basics of setting up Fusion. So the first thing I need to do also is set up a Unity project. So I'm setting up a 3D Unity project. I'm using um, the latest 2021 version um, I have on my machine, and I'm just calling it Fusion Bytes, and I'm going to create this, and I'll pause while I'm doing this. Okay, so there we are. We have Unity open, but the next thing we need to do is install Fusion. And unlike um, the older versions of Photon Engine's multiplayer tools, you can't get it through the Unity Asset Store. You actually get it directly from their website. So let's do that. So I'm just going to PhotonEngine.com, and I'm just going to go ahead and click SDKs up here in the top right. Um, if Fusion is not selected by default, go ahead and select that. And um we just come down here to fusion because we're installing it for unity so i'm gonna go ahead and click that and let's get the fusion sdk and here we have the sdk download page and you can see the latest release date is july 19th 2023 um, so this is a pretty recent release and so i'm just gonna go ahead and click on this and i'm going to download it i probably already have it in my downloads folder but i'm gonna go ahead and download it again if you're presented with this page, it could just mean that you need to create an account first on Fusion. I already are on Photon. I already have one, so I'm going to go ahead and sign into it. All right, so you can see by this little one, I've already installed this previously, but I'm going to go ahead and download it again. Why not? All right, so I already finished downloading. Um, I could just click here and launch it, and it'll open up the Unity Editor. But let's just go ahead and go into the Editor and do it. So, so you can see how to import packages. So you just go to Asset, Import Package, Custom Package. And if I go to my Downloads folder, if I sort by date, um, where is it? Oh, I'm in my Documents folder. Downloads folder, <laughs> it's right there at the top. Let's go ahead and install that. All right, so once um, it shows you this window, we're going to go ahead and use everything from Fusion here. Um, this doesn't include any demo scenes or anything like that. If you want Fusion demo scenes, you can get a lot of those through the Asset Store. They also have some linked on their website too, but we're just going to import the essentials here. So I'm just going to click Import and wait for this to complete. All right, when that finishes importing, you should be presented with this Welcome to Photon Fusion, which is nice because it gets you ready to go and it lets you know, hey, you're missing something. You need a Fusion app ID. And you can click right here in the Open Photon Dashboard and it should open the dashboard.photonengine.com in your default web browser. All right, once you're in here, you need to click on create a new app. And uh, if it's a non-gaming app, um, click this. Uh, I think with Photon, if you're doing a non-gaming app, you need to do something special with them. But I'm sure most of you are here to make games. So choose multiplayer game. And the Photon SDK we want is Fusion and create a name for it. And the rest of this is optional. I'm going to go ahead and click create. Now, I can't create it because you are limited to um, a maximum number of game uh, apps you can have on Photon, and I have like 25 already. Um, I'm just going to use one of the ones I've already created, so I'm going to copy that. So if I go back to the dashboard, find the app you created, and get the app ID right here. Just click in that field and copy it. Let's toggle back into Unity, and then you're just going to paste it right here. After you paste it, press Enter, and this should turn green. All right, the next thing you want to do is you can click on um, Fusion. You might need to click Fusion Setup. I think that's where we were already, but click on Fusion Network Project Settings. And if we expand Config, we're just going to take a look at one thing here, and that's Peer Mode. We're going to leave it on Single. Um, what Multiple lets you do is it lets you, it's great for testing too. It lets you have multiple players locally, um, which means you're going to have multiple network runners, which we'll talk about later. But for now, let's just keep it single. Maybe in a future tutorial, we'll look at doing multiple. Next, let's click on Photon App Settings. Now in here, when testing, it might be a good idea for you to pick a fixed region. Um, because sometimes, like you'll do a build and you'll try to test like off a build and you'll do the second player or something in the Unity Editor. And for some reason, Unity or Fusion or somebody will connect to the wrong server so if you force a region i'm just going to put us on all my builds and in the editor it's always going to be in the us region so that i know i can connect how do you know what a fixed region is um what the region codes are um it would be nice if in this question mark it would actually give you the examples it's kind of odd that they don't include that here but you can get it from their website i'll show you so in the Photon Fusion documentation, if you go to connection and authentication and look at regions, 
it should be listed right in here and here's the current available regions here you can see i chose us and that's us east and the server's hosted in washington dc so back in unity um we're pretty much done here um there's other links to the tutorials and samples and documentation for fusion i'm gonna put my app id back in here but then we're done with this hub portion all right, hopefully in the next four minutes, we're going to learn to actually make a fusion connection. First thing I like to do is I like to create an empty game object and I like to create a fusion manager. You don't have to do it exactly this way. You can technically put scripts wherever you want, but I like to have an empty game object and I put it in brackets. So it's easy for me to see what it is, where it is and what it's doing. All right. And then in my project folder, I'm going to, in my assets folder, create a new folder for scripts. And I'm going to create a new C sharp script and I'm just going to call this fusion connection. You can call it whatever you want. Once that's finished compiling, we're going to double click and open it up and it should open up in visual studio or whatever, uh, I forget what you call these tools, but whatever coding system you use and you have it set up by default in unity, it'll open it up. All right. I'm going to go ahead and maximize this. And if you're curious how to get the solution explorer up, you just go to view and go to Solution Explorer. It's really nice so you don't have to like toggle back to Unity to like find a script you want to edit. Um, you just have to figure out what folder it's in and everything should, like your main project is in this Assembly C Sharp folder. Here you can see my assets folder. There's my scripts and there's the one we're working on, Fusion Connection. All right, so one thing that we're gonna do is we know right away that we want to use Fusion. So I'm gonna type in using Fusion and I don't need any of this stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save my script now and um, we need something from fusion here we're going to put a comma and off the top of my head I actually don't remember what it's called is it I network uh, I network runner callbacks I knew if I typed an I it would be there you gotta love IntelliSense in Visual Studio all right so I need that so I'm just gonna go ahead and press enter and it's gonna have an error here because when you have these callbacks um, if it this is an interface. Now, don't ask me the details of this and how these work. I'll just show you how I use them. So a shortcut, this is telling us you can't use this unless you have implementations for all of these callbacks. So I'm just going to hold down Alt on my keyboard and press Enter. And then I'm going to choose Implement Interface. And there it puts everything that we need in here. Now, these callbacks come from Fusion. So when these events happen, you'll get these methods called. Um, you can leave these throw new not implemented exception. And so what will happen is if these callbacks happen, it's going to, I think, stop your project. And um, you'll probably see some console warnings or errors, at least logs pop up in the Unity console. What I'm just going to do is I'm going to go control, no, not control, I'm going to go control F and I'm going to search throw new not implemented exception it doesn't let me search semicolons. What did I do wrong? Close it colon. Okay. Now I got it. All right. And then I'm going to do this drop down, and I'm going to weird delete all that. And I'm going to click this replace all. And so now I've cleared those all out. All right. You don't need to do that. I just like to do that so that they're out of my way. I'm gonna go ahead and save. And, um, what we're going to do is we're just going to debug dot log um on connected to server so that we know when we're connected to the server and what else do i want and then let's do a debug.log on player join this way when those events happen i will receive uh, a log in the uh, unity console let's go ahead and go back to unity it's going to compile all right, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab this Fusion connection and drop it onto my Fusion Manager. Might have made sense to actually call this my Fusion Manager as well, but I'm just gonna keep it how it is. All right, and so um, nothing's gonna happen yet. If I were to hit play, nothing's gonna happen because we didn't tell it to do anything. All we have is all the callbacks set up. So let's jump back in here. And um, not there. Um, you might wanna implement a namespace for your projects. Always a good idea. Um, so I put my quote unquote dev name and then a dot and then the name of the project and then maybe even something else, another dot, but uh, that's enough for me for most of my projects. I'm going to collapse that 
cut it, paste it in there. There we go. Oh, I forgot my start and updater way down here. Let's go ahead and cut those out. And I'm not even going to re-add them yet. Um, I want a public bool that is uh, um, connect on start. Or how about connect on awake. And I'm going to make that false. And then private void awake. And then um, we need a method for actually connecting to Fusion. Real quick, I want to pause and point out that on the Fusion documentation, they're going to cover a lot of these steps that I already covered. So if you go to the Fusion documentation, go to tutorials, um, host mode, I'm not going to talk a lot about, at least maybe I will later in the series. I'm more familiar with shared mode, so I'm doing everything with shared mode in mind. And if you just go to getting started, it's going to walk you through a lot of what I've already done. Also, if you want a shortcut, you can also right click in your hierarchy, go to Fusion, go to Setup, and you can add networking to the scene. Um, I think it's better for you to start from scratch though, so you can kind of know how all these pieces work together. Um, same thing like if you try downloading one of the Fusion tutorials or product samples, there's a lot of scripts in there. And it's just gonna be a lot of script reading. If you prefer that method, then hey, by all means, go check out some of their game samples and read through and see how they do things. But I feel like starting from scratch from the beginning makes it a lot easier to learn in small bites. I'm a bit tortured in which direction I want to go with this, but I think we're just going to go the fastest way of connecting. Um, so the reason we have this connect on awake is uh, if this bool is true, then we're going to set it to just connect as soon as we hit this awake method. Otherwise, it's not going to do anything. But one thing we need to make everything happen is called a network runner. So I'm going to go ahead and do a public network runner, and I'm going to call it runner. So also on awake, if runner is null, then we need to create one. Um, runner is going to equal uh, add component. I don't think it'll let us do that without doing game object first. Game object dot add component network runner. All right, so on awake, if there isn't a network runner variable yet, we're going to create one. And um, let's create a new, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make this public void connect to runner. And then this is just going to be runner. We're gonna do another null check. If I'm just going to copy this copy, actually, we're not even gonna do it in the wake state. Cause there's no reason to, um, cause we're doing it in the connect to runner state. So if runner's null, we're going to create one. And then we're going to do runner dot, I'm sorry, we're going to do this in an await. This needs to be a public async void. It doesn't have to be public. Um, so notice it says now that, hey, you can't, you, you need an await operator. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to await So to know more about start game arguments, you can go to the Fusion documentation, and here we're in the matchmaking section. So if you go up to, if you're on the Fusion documentation, go to manual and go to matchmaking API and scroll down to creating and joining the game session. Here it gives you an example, and this isn't even all of them, I don't think. Um, some of these are required, others aren't. I can't remember off the top of my head which are not required. Uh, actually, they might not even be required. If you leave some of them blank, I think it might just make assumptions based on your basic Fusion default settings. Um, we're not going to use most of these. Um, maybe we'll do session name. And uh, I think that might be all that we handle right now. Let's see. I'm sure Visual Studio will tell us some things that we're missing. Real quick, let's pop over in Unity again just to see what our script looks like right now. And with this runner here, it is a public variable, but I want it to be hidden in the inspector, so I'm not tempted to fill this component. 
Um, so I'm going to go back into here and I'm just going to hide in inspector. Great. And then for now, let's just see what happens because I've never done it. Um, if we just leave the game arguments empty, I think I have done this before. I think it'll tell us we need at least a session name, but let's check out this awake variable. Um, if connect on awake and I'm, you don't have to put is true like that. You can just do if connect on awake. Um, we are going to connect to runner. I like to put the true there for tutorials just to know what it means. So people know like, what, what, what are we checking here? All right, so back in Unity, we can see that our runner variable is hidden. Let's go ahead and check the connect on awake and let's see what happens. So it created our network runner for us like it's supposed to because on connects to runner, if the runner is null, then we're gonna create it. But you can see that it didn't try, it didn't do anything because we didn't connect to server, so we're not getting anything there. And I'm surprised we're not getting any errors at all. I'm really surprised by this. So I'm just gonna show you real quick a Fusion Manager in a different project. And this is typically what I have on my um, game arguments. I have game mode, because it needs to know if you're connecting shared mode, hosted mode, server mode, yada, yada. I will be doing everything in shared. Um, it also wants to have a session name. If you leave that blank, it should just create one randomly. But if you're gonna create one randomly, you might as well be able to predict what that randomness is. So I'll show you how we create a random room. Um, it wants to know what the starting scene is going to be. Usually this is a requirement. I'm really surprised it didn't give us any errors. Um, I also like to set how many players I want per room. And then it usually also requires this. So I'm not sure why I'm not getting an error for it now, but it requires a scene manager. And it doesn't mean Unity scene manager. It means the network, some type of network scene manager. Um, so really, I'm just going to copy this <laughs> rather than have to type it all up. And I'm just going to go ahead and paste it over here. And um, session name it was a variable in my other project. We're just gonna do this for now. Um, actually, why did I do that? Let's just call it test. All right, and notice everything in here is separated by a comma because this is all like one command. And so it all, when it's done, has a semicolon at the end. And um, yeah, let's go back to Unity. That's saved and let's hit play. So I'm in Unity, just finished compiling. I'm gonna hit play. All right, so now we can actually see some stuff happen. So we got the on connected to server callback. Remember, we set up that debug. We got the on player join um, callback. We set up that debug. Um, now the network scene manager, it failed to switch scenes. And um, it's because I put a scene build index that doesn't exist. So what this line does is technically, if you define the scene that you want for starting game, it should transition automatically for you. Um, I have not been able to trust it. I don't know if things have changed, but I typically do my own scene manage management using scene manager with Unity. Um, but you still require to have this some type of network scene manager component. Um, I'm going to remove the scene just to see what happens because I don't think you have to have that there. I think it just really wants the scene manager component. All right, we reconnected just fine. It doesn't need to know the scene number, so we're good. So as you can see over here, we have our Fusion Connection script. It created this network runner, and this component's really important because you can look at the current status. Um, one thing we're going to look at later is um, the network runner likes to keep track of what the local player object is so in a future byte we'll take a look at how we can set the player object um and here's the network scene manager default you can write your own i always just use um the one that comes with fusion um i'm just gonna i don't know what the physics simulation thing does here or the hitbox manager does but it just happens automatically they get created automatically when the runner connects also, for testing purposes, there's also the shutdown button you can hit. So if you click it, by default, it actually destroys the game object it's on. Oh, no, it didn't. Oh, it's still there. It didn't shut down. Wait, what? I'm so confused by that. But anyways, we'll take more look uh, in details on future bytes and what we're going to do from here. Go from here. Where we're going to go from here. Um, but that's pretty much it. I'm going to do one last thing as the cards pop up on the screen on what's taking you to the next video and remind you to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm just going to remove that scene management component and see if it still connects, but I don't think it will. So here I am. I'm just going to delete this scene manager line and see if it stays happy. Yeah, perfectly fine. It does not care about the scene manager at on, so I'm actually going to leave that off. So um, until next time, see you later. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe.